today that God gave me and he has put in my heart heavily. And not only did he put it in my heart to give it today, but it's what he's been working on me throughout this whole year Amen. from the beginning of January, even up until now. Amen. And I know he's still working on me. Amen. 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 And so the title of my message today is The Battle Against Character. Amen. The Battle Against Character. Amen. Amen. And so we know as Christians, we've mastered how to do warfare against the devil. If we ask, you know, if someone asks us to quote a scripture against the devil, I'm sure we all know the Bible verse that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violence taken by the force. So we know all these scriptures against fighting the devil. But what about character? And so in the New Testament, we see that the, the, the main goal that Jesus came was to cause his people to begin to move in anointing, to move in miracles, to cause signs and wonders. And so it was to bring down the, the, the strongholds of the enemy. But when we look at the Old Testament, we didn't see much about the, the devil. With the Israelites and with God, it was all about character. Every time God rebuked them, every time God was punishing them, it's because of your character. Amen. Yeah. And so today, that's what the Lord said I should talk about. And this whole year, he's been making me fight against my character that I have been with for the past 24 years of my life. Amen. Amen. And so the first, first scripture we're going to read today, it's from Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33, it says, What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness. Even the righteous of faith, but Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but has, has it were by the works of the Lord. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Amen. Amen. And so the Israelites, God had given them the Ten Commandments to cause them to change their character, to change the way they were working, to cause them to by force obey and walk in the way of the Lord. And so we see that this was um, this was the New Testament after Jesus had spoken to his disciples. And they were saying that the Israelites in the Old Testament and even the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the reason they could not walk in righteousness is because of the law. And it was causing them to act against which what they were. And that was their innate character that they already had from the time they were born. Amen. Amen. And so God says they stumbled at that stumbling stone. What was the stumbling stone? That was the law. And why was it a stumbling stone? The law, it was not bad. God said don't kill your brethren. Love and never has yourself. Do good. So why was that a stumbling stone in the eyes of the Israelites? It's because that's not who they were on the inside. Who they were on the inside was evil. They were malicious. They were hateful. They had anger. And so when God gave this law, it was impossible for them to change out of who they were to begin to seek God faithfully. And so the stumbling stone that was before them, it was not Satan. It was not the devil. It was not principalities, it was their character, it was within themselves. And had they fought that battle, they would have tried, they would have continued working and walking in righteousness with God. Amen. Amen. And so our character can be our stumbling block. Just like the Israelites, our own character, what you have, how you have been since the day you were born until now, it can be your stumbling block. And so therefore, our characters are blocks that God can go. And so we all know that some blocks, you can use it to build a house. And then we see some blocks, that's what the construction workers put on the road to close up the highway, amen. And so blocks can be used in different ways. But it depends on who you are and how God can use you, amen. amen. And so when the enemy comes seeking to touch you, seeking to use you, he's looking at the type of character that you have. He's trying to see, has God already taken you and is molding you and is building you up? 
If he comes and he sees that God has done nothing with you, he's going to take what you have and use it as a stumbling block for you. Amen? And so you need to begin to ask yourself, what type of character do I have? Is my character my stumbling block? Because we can come to church and we can begin to bind and cast the devil, but if you go home with the exact same character, the exact same block that you are facing is going to face you when you go home. And so once you have liberated yourself from the enemy, you are still held bound by your own character. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so the problem again for the Israelites, it was not the devil. And for many of us today, the problem with us is not the devil. Right. It's within. It's yeah. us. You have to look within and see what it is that you have. What characters do you carry? Amen. 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 And so if we are focusing solely on warfare, Warfare is amazing. But when you're doing warfare, also begin to battle against the characters that you know you have. Speak against that anger. Speak against that hatred. Speak against that jealousy. Speak against that envy. You speak to it. Because sometimes we just say, I bind and cast the devil. Yes, God will do that for you, but he's waiting for you to begin to rebuke what is in you first. Amen. 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 And so today, God wants us to begin to fight characters that have, have been with us from the days that we were born. He wants us to ask Him, Lord, reveal my true nature. Show me who I am so I can begin to transform. Amen. Amen. And so when we go to Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4, Romans 5, 3 to 4, it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience, you know the rest, amen. But the New King James Bible version, instead of experience, it says character. And so that is a perfect word. And so experience and character can be used exchangeably, interchangeably. And so experience shapes your character, but your character also determines the kind of experience that you have. And so if you're walking in anger, wherever you go, whether people are nice to you or not, you're just going to be angry for no reason. Even though you're in a good situation, you're just going to be having attitudes for no reason. And so experience can shape your character, but your character also shows you what type of experience you will have. If you're a good person, wherever you go, you will have favor. Whether they hate you or not, your niceness will cause them to like you by force. Amen. And so that is them changing. They will be mean and rude to everybody, but when it comes to you, you're so humble. You're so nice. They talk to you in a calm way, but when it's somebody else, you're yelling. Yeah. And so you see how your own character has shifted the experience that you are having. Amen? Amen. And so our minds have been programmed that if our life is stagnant or it seems as though we're not moving forward, it can only be the enemy. And so today our minds must begin to change that if you're not moving forward and you've been praying months and months against the enemy waging warfare and nothing is moving, then you have to realize it's not the enemy. And so you have to begin to change the way you pray. You change the type of fasting you enter. You can enter a fast simply because of anger. Right. You enter a fast simply because you gossip too much. Yes. You enter a fast and say, Lord, help me. I get jealous of people. I don't know why. Right. Amen? Yes. Amen? And so the season where God has chosen to use us is this season. So we must break out of the character that we've been molded in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When now we go and we look in the Bible, the perfect example of character was Job. For the past few Sundays, Prophetess has explained Job and you know how God you know used him and took him through a rough path. But Job stayed in the Lord. When Satan went to God asking for Job, he didn't go to God and say, Lord. Job has too much money. I want to take his money. Because when we go to church, that's what we're praying. Lord, I take back my money from the devil. I take back my riches. The devil did not go to God asking for money. He went to God to make sure to make that Job will act out of his character. And so he said, if you take away his riches, he's going to deny you. Why? Because it means in his character, his riches is his person. 
that's who he is. And so if you take away his riches, his character will go bad. Yeah. And so the devil knows how to go asking God for things. He didn't say, give me Job's family. He didn't say, give me his money, give me his animals. No. He, he said, if you take this away, this is what his character will do. Yeah. So Satan was chasing the character of Job and not his wealth. Amen. Amen. And so we see that Job stayed firm and he stayed strong. And when we look in Job chapter 1 verse 21, it says, The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave and he has taken away. Can you imagine everything has been taken from you and this is what you say? For you to be able to say this, it means that who you are is who God is. And so even if they take it away, you still say, I have God. Yeah. And that's because your character has been built where, where all you need is God. You yeah. don't need nothing else. Yeah. And so when they take what they take your money, they take your family, they take what made you who you are, you have come to the place where you realize that those things were not who I am. That's right. Those things were just deceiving me. Who I am is who God has told me I am. Yeah. And so if God has taken it away, then he should take it away because he's the one who gave it. Right. Amen? Amen. And so Job stayed strong. He stayed very strong and very firm. He was weak. He was tired. He was full of sorrow. He was full of pain. But his character never shifted. Yeah. And so much more than the words Job uttered, used to utter to God, that he's the one who gave it away, even with his satisfaction that God had taken it away, he was still in pain. And so when God is changing your character, you are going to be in pain. Because that's who you have been for 24 years and nobody has told you to change. And so when you're changing, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts so bad right. to where you begin to cry. If you're someone who always spoke your mind and God is telling you, I need you to stay quiet, yeah. you're going to cry. Because times will come when you want to say something, you want to set someone in your place, but then God tells you you need to be quiet. And so with all that anger bubbling inside of you, what are you going to do? You're only going to cry because if God has told you not to say anything to anyone. So who are you going to go yell at? You will only cry, amen. Yeah. And so Job understood this. And so he didn't even know who to even cry out to. And that's why every day, every word he was saying, it was to God. Uh, even his friends came to console him. He didn't care. All his cries were to God. Yeah. Because he knew that that's who is in charge of his life. Yeah. That's who has transformed him. Yeah. And that is who is going to transform him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so there are jobs today. When we read the Bible, we think that, you know, in what Job did, you know, holding on to God, I cannot do that, that cannot be me. You are saying it cannot be you because you are speaking from the instance of the character that you are now. Yeah. When God begins to transform your mind, He transforms how you love Him, He transforms how you seek Him. If God does what He did to Job to you today, because you have read in the Bible of what God gave Job after you, we begin to dance and praise God yeah. because you know that what God did for Job, if He's doing it for you, that means at the end of the road there is double coming back to you. Yeah. Yeah. And so they are jobs today. They are jobs today. Yeah. It's just your character is blinding you from seeing that. Amen. Amen. And so God used the character of Job to shut down the enemy. When the devil came asking for Job, God didn't have to give it to give um, into the enemy because God already knew the thoughts of Job. He already knew the type of character that Job had. And so he knew that even if the enemy takes away his riches, he knew that Job would not walk away. Yeah. So why did God then allow the enemy to use Job? Yeah. It was not only for God to build Job up, but it was for God to crush the head of the enemy and yeah. step on his heart. in pain and he was in sorrow. Can you imagine what was going on in heaven? Every time Satan will come to the presence of God, Lord will ask him, have you seen Job? Did he give up? Satan will be like, no. He will go back, he will come back again. God will ask Satan, has Job given up? Satan will say, no. Do you know what that does to Satan's pride? Do you know what that does? Why would God not honor Job? 
strong at the end of it all. Because he crushed the head of the enemy. And he did not have to stand to cast and bind the enemy. Job used his character to fight. That Job went through. The enemy thought it was to break him down. Meanwhile, God was using him as a weapon. God was using Job as a weapon to show the enemy that there's a characteristic of sons and God rising up. Yes. Even if you take away what they have. Wants. 
It will just di directly show what qualities a person lives by. So character shows the, the qualities a person lives by. Amen? Amen. You can easily notice someone's character because it shows externally. Attitudes are not that easy to figure out because it is within a person and it is up for him to change it and fit in. It will take you a long time to know the attitude of a person, but knowing someone's character is fast. You can easily notice character because it surfaces through the people, but attitude is hard to see because a person can manipulate one's attitude, amen? And that's why today there are so many wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh -huh. they, they, are, they are nice on the inside, they smile with you, but the minute they leave you, they are going to go gossip your name. The minute they leave you, they are going to go talk back about you. The minute they leave you, they are telling lies about you. Why? And you think, wow, this person used to be so nice. It's not used to, that's who they were. This person who used to be so nice to me, I don't know what I did to them. It's because they have a spirit of jealousy in them. And so when you come and you see them, they can manipulate what you see. Yeah. And so you're acting all nice, or oh, I can help you, and you're acting all humble. But when you go and you leave them alone, the thoughts about you are demonic. Yeah. The thoughts about you are terrible. That's and you begin to sit and you ask yourself, how can someone be so nice and be this terrible? Yeah. They were never nice. They were just manipulating what you see. Yeah. And so they were showing you the attitude you want to see. Yeah. And that's why many people, even with some friends, you begin to say, my friend has changed. No, your character has been like that yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. If you pay attention, you will notice that. And so when you notice someone's character from the beginning, even when they come smiling in your face, in your mind, you already know this person is smiling, but I need to be careful of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. You're nice with me, but I still need to be careful with them. Yeah. Amen. And so most times we miss that because you're so nice. You're like, oh, okay. You know, I can be your friend. We can relate. We can do things together. And then when they turn your back on you, you're wondering what happened. Wow. You're wondering where did it go wrong? That's just how they were. And had you paid attention instead of the attitude they were showing you, but to your character, you will yeah. never be shocked. Because when it happens to you, you already know. Yeah. And that's why you were being careful from the beginning. Yeah. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and so when we go on and we read Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8. It says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Amen. And so right here, you are describing the character of Jesus. How he was, not only on earth, but how he was in heaven. It says even when he was in heaven, he did not think himself equal with God. Even though God told him that you are a part of me, he knew that he had power and authority, but he never thought he was equal with God. And when he came on earth, he followed that same path. Amen. And so we see that even when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were troubling him, when they were coming to him, they were asking deceptive questions. He could read your minds and your thoughts. Yet he did not break out of character because he knew who he was. He was not here for them. And so he was not paying attention to what they were doing. And so that's exactly what he thought of his apostles. When his apostles were going around preaching the word of God and were facing persecution, they didn't care. Because they are going to see Jesus do it. Jesus ignored them. Because the character in you does not cause you to bow down to persecution. Yeah. You know what you are chasing. Yeah. You know that the one that has called you has told you, I need you to go and preach. And so even when people are, are talking about you, they are cursing you, they are calling you out of your name, you still maintain that same character of kindness wherever you go. God wants us to do even today. When your family is persecuting you, they hate you, they have done evil against you. When they come back to you and they ask you, 
please pray for me. You humble yourself and you say, yes, I will pray for you. When they come to you and they say, I need you to help me fast, you humble yourself and say, yes, I will help you fast. Because that's the transformation that God has brought into your character. And so no longer are you thinking the way you were thinking when you were in the world where you want to do payback. This person is asking me to pray for them. I'm not going to pray for them. I'm instead going to pray that God will strike them down. God help us. Amen. Amen. And so we have to be transformed as we're in our walk with God. Amen. Amen. And so even as Jesus was t teaching his disciples, he got frustrated too. When they brought the, um, the child and they asked the disciples to cast out the demon, they didn't do it. And then Jesus came frustrated and said, how long will I be with you? But even in that frustration, he understood that he's molding them to be something. And so even though he gets frustrated, he's still going to be there to teach them. So humbleness. Humbleness. Amongst the, the, the least, and he, was, he knew he was the greatest amongst the least, yet he made himself the least. Yeah. He made himself the least. Amen. Amen. And so that's what... That's how Jesus was. That's how he wants us to be. And so even when you know who you are and you can carry your shoulders with pride, the character of God in you always causes you to be humble. Yeah. People are always saying, wow, you're always being so helpful. You're being so nice. You're being so kind. Why are you doing all these things? Instead, you should let people do that for you and you say no. Yeah. It's not because you're trying to show up that you're nice. It's not trying, it's not because you're trying to show up that you're better than them. No. It's because the character in you just it causes you to want to help. It causes you to act out of the norm. Amen. Amen. And so when we carry the character of God, we cannot change based on the situations that we face. We cannot change based on the words people say, based on what happens to us financially, socially, mentally. We cannot change. And so when we spoke earlier about the Israelites and how they frustrated God and how they didn't want to listen to him, their stumbling block was their character. And so all along, it was not just the enemy that is fighting you, your own character is fighting you too. And so if we turn a blind eye to that, we're, oh, we're going to spend years and years in God and not change. And that's why many people don't even like church. They don't like Christians. Because we're the ones that gossip. We're the ones that hate people. We're the ones that think we're better than everybody. We're the ones that don't want to help. When we come, we just want to sit down and let people serve us. We, we, there's so many things that people are saying. Because nobody, when we come to Christ, nobody wants to transform anymore. That's right. You come to church and you're only seeking that they should teach you how to deal with your enemies. But you're not seeking that they should tell you, tell me how I can change. Yeah. I'm jealous of people. I don't know why. Tell me what I can do. That's right. I hate people for no reason. Tell me what I can That's do. Right. I'm always waking up upset. Tell me what I can That's do. Right. We don't do that. And so when we come to church, we're rude, we're not nice, we're twisting our faces as if someone has done something to us. When we don't have a job, that's the time where nobody should talk to you. You're just walking so, so upset and mad at the world. I'm a Christian. Amen. Amen. God help us. Amen. 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 And so some examples of good characters, I'm going to list some out. Honesty, selflessness, kindness, goodness, gentleness, love, peace, joy, patience. That should make you remember the Bible verse. Amen. Amen. The fruits of the Spirit. Yes. Have you ever asked yourself, why are these the fruits of the Spirit? Me walking in love, me walking in peace, me walking in joy. What is that going to do for me? It's not going to give me money. It's not going to give me a job. It's not going to give me a husband. So why is God asking me to do these things? Why? It's because he wants to change your inner man. Yeah. He's not seeking for what you are on the outside. It's your inner man that he wants. That's right. He wants you to transform from within. And when you transform from within, it shifts the experience that you have. That's right. That's right. 
If you remember, character shapes your experience. Yeah. So when you're walking in love, you're walking in honesty, you're walking in happiness, you're walking in gentleness, things begin to come to you. Right. People begin to take your name everywhere, and you're not even, you're not even, you know, you're not famous in anything, you're not even proclaiming your own self. People begin to do it for you because of the fruits of the spirit that are coming out of you, your character. People begin to call you and want to give you a job. People begin to call you and want you to teach them what you do. Yeah. How are you? How are you walking this way? Why are you always so nice even when they're talking about you? You're so nice even when you're angry. It's because of the character that has changed in you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so some of the bad characters that we have, I have. I'm going to list that the ones that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me this whole year, man. Amen. And as you hear them pray for me, and I'll be praying for you too. <laughs> Amen. 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 And so the four, the five, um, the five characters that God told me that I had to change are a loose tongue. Mm. I don't know how to talk to people. Mm. Second one is anger. Next one is inconsiderate. Next is greed. Mm. Last one is controlling. Wow. And so you can only know these things. I can only know these things when I ask God to rebuke me and ask God, Lord, show me myself. And he was very quick with it. God did not waste no time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the first one was a loose tongue. Change the way you talk to people. I'm still working on it. Amen. 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 <laughs> That actually happened the, the, the month of our inauguration. A, a situation happened. Um, one of our ministers, her daughter was on the stage and was supposed to sing. And I told her, no, let her come down, let her not sing. And so do you know that after I told her that she was crying, nobody told me that she was crying. That same night, we were all supposed to be helping. And there was a minister that, you know, she said that she wanted to come and listen to the word of the Lord. And I actually, I was resisting her. And I said, you cannot come and sit down to listen to the word of the Lord when everyone else is working. But she still came and she sat down and I was so mad. I was so upset. And after I came and spoke to prophetess and I told prophetess, this is where my exact words, prophetess, everybody is being so inconsiderate. They're not considering the feelings of other people. And I was crying. And I went home. Prophetess spoke to me, told me, you know, it's okay, let it go. I went home and I slept and I woke up. But then there was still a burden in me, like I was not okay. And so I was like, okay, let me ask God, what could I have done better? What did I do? And I began to ask God, what did I do? What did I do? And that same morning, Prophetess called me and she told me that. Merciful. The child you told her to sing, did you know that she was crying out all um, the whole time? I said, no, nobody told me. And so I got up the, and she told me, she was like, make sure when you go to church, you apologize to her. And I said, okay, prophetess, I'm going to go off the phone. And the whole time I was thinking about it, I was like, I, I, was, I was defending myself basically, I was like, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I was just thinking about her, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't think that she would be crying. And the whole time I think I'm asking her, but what was my fault? I don't see it. And then God opened my eyes. And he said that the time you were coming, you were crying and you were telling prophetess that everybody is being inconsiderate. One child came to me and was crying about you being inconsiderate. So while you were standing there crying about everybody doing something else, a little child, which I said, don't rebuke children, came to me crying because of you. And so who did the greatest sin? The minister that didn't want to help on me. I did. And so when I came to church without understanding, I immediately found her and I apologized for the deepest part of my heart. 
Because if I didn't do that, if I didn't get that understanding, I'll come and apologize to her just because Prophet said to apologize. And that will not be a sincere apology. And God will know it's not a sincere apology. And so I had to make God make me understand why I went wrong. And you see, if God did not waste no time telling me where I went wrong. That because I did not consider her feelings, I was expecting other people to consider my feelings. And I was crying. Amen. Amen. And so when you ask God to open your eyes to see your attitude, He will show you. Yeah. You will see actually how bad you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking I was okay, you know, everybody's at fault but me. Until I was even crying. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Lord help me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so that was the day that the next Sunday, which was Sunday. We had our conclusion of the conference of our inauguration. And that was when God told me that I am inconsiderate. And so I took that and I've been praying about it. And so now, before I do anything, I try to consider people first. I try, it's so hard because you're just used to only thinking about yourself. What is going to help me? What's going to make me feel nice and happy? Yeah. But you can't do that anymore. And so now consciously, I have to remind myself, merciful, be careful, don't talk carelessly, don't have anger for no reason, don't be controlling for no reason. And so when God exposes it to you, when providence comes and tries and rebukes you and tells you, this is the way you've been doing, I don't like this, I see this controlling spirit in you, you're not going to be upset because the Holy Spirit has already told you. Yeah. And so it's not even a confirmation of what the Holy Spirit wants you to walk on. And so you see how it makes it easy for you to receive rebuke. Yeah. It's so easy. And Prophet this has actually told me I'm controlling it. <laughs> so pray for me. Amen. <laughs> but you see, I can stand in and talk about it because I don't take that in a bad way. Amen. I don't take that in a bad way. Because God is building me up. And he must change me by God. And so other bad characters that we can have is dishonesty, pride, jealousy, envy, selfishness, greed, falsehood, just telling lies for no reason. A big one is procrastination. Who's on that table? I know I'm on that table. Lord, help me. 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 Lord, help us. Procrastination. When God tells us to do something, we have to do it. We don't put it on the back seat and say, I'm going to come back to it later. I'm going to work on it. Lord, give me some time. And He's been giving you one month. Then one month turns into two months, and then two months turns into one year. Before you know it, you're forgetting what God wants you to even do. Procrastination. We take it so lightly, but it's actually a bad character that you have to change. Yeah. And you have to con- consciously work on it. Amen. Amen. And so when now we when we when you think about all these characters, you need to begin to ask yourself, what is in me? What is in me? What can I change? What do I have to change? But you can only do that when you come to the point where you're like, Lord, I want to serve you with all my heart. But then there are certain things that happen sometimes where I get angry for no reason. And that happens to me sometimes. Like, someone doesn't want to do something and I'm free and I'm available and I can do it. But because they didn't want to do it, now I'm angry and upset. And I know you just bubbling inside of me. Why? I'm not doing anything. I can do it. So why am I upset? And so when you ask God to show you, He will show you what you are doing. Yeah. When you ask Him, Lord, show me, do I have anger? Do I have greediness? Do I have maliciousness? Do I think evil of people? And so God is living right there. He wastes no time to show you who you are. But the reason that people are not 
changing is because you're not asking God. Yeah. Nobody comes. No, I, nobody. I don't. Hear, this is not a regular prayer from what we 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 hear in many churches today. Where it, the prayer point is just Lord, help me with anger. Many times it's usually Lord, give me a job. Lord. Give me. I'm struggling financially. Lord. This. I have immigration. Lord. Can you help? My sister is. Up. Can you help? And we don't ask God to help us with our character, so we're put into the back seat. What is supposed to propel us forward, we're forgetting about it. Yeah. And so, Job, what propelled Job was his character. Yeah. God gave him a double honor, double honor after the rough crack he went through, because he was in, he caused a shame on the devil. Yeah. What the devil was intending, Job did not do it. And so God honored him. And so the enemy wants us to be walking around here as angry Christians and hateful Christians and be talking anyhow and not be respectful and disrespecting people. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Because you know God cannot use somebody like that to go anywhere. That's right. Yeah. And so you will keep standing in the same place wondering that I command the enemy to untie me. Wherever they have put me, I command him to untie me. You need to untie that anger. Yeah. Amen. will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, As surely I say to you this night, that before the cluster grows, you will deny me three times. <laughs> Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Amen. Amen. And so this was Jesus trying to reveal a character that the disciples had. And they did not have understanding. Jesus was not saying that they were scattered because they don't believe in him. It's because their character had not been molded to where even in the face of death they can still stand and defend him. Right. And so he was revealing to them what is in them. But they did not catch the revelation. And so that's why Peter was able to stand and say, Lord, I will not deny you. And Jesus said, yes, you will. And he told him exactly how he was going to do it. Yeah. And so we see that it happened exactly as Jesus said. Amen. Amen. And so at this point, the disciples had been following Jesus. And they were understanding, you know, the signs and the miracles. And they knew that he was the son of God. But then there was still a character in them that was not really in, in a steadfast and diligent place with God that even though people say this, I'm not going to change how I talk. Yeah. And so they had not been molded enough. And so that's why when Peter went to where Jesus was and they asked him, are you not part of Jesus? He said, no. Someone else came again, are you not part of Jesus? He said, no. Another person comes again. I saw you with Jesus following me. He still said no. And so three times, now actually four, because Jesus told him, the first person told him, the third person, second, the third person told um, Peter, and the fourth person told Peter that he denied Jesus four times, basically. I was trying to say if that makes sense. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And so four times, Jesus was revealing to Peter that. I know you love me, but then you still need some building up. Yeah. And Peter's eyes were closed those four times. But we see that once Jesus was resurrected and went to heaven, and God began to move mightily in them, he had molded them to where now Jesus said, Peter, I put you in charge of everybody else. Hallelujah. That was Jesus telling him that you have been down up and now 
you have been molded to perfection, you have been completed. And so that's when now, when people came and they wanted to crucify the apostles, they still said, I don't care. If you want to kill me, kill me. I'm still going to push the word of God.
told her that, hey, this is how I feel when you talk. And so you see how the enemy can blind you sometimes. So when you begin to hate someone for no reason, you haven't even told them why you are feeling the way you are feeling. You haven't told them what it is you're doing. And so when I got that understanding, I was very quickly able to go back and call her and apologize. Because that should never happen in the church of God. Yeah. It should never happen in our lives as a Christian. But when you, if, imagine if I didn't call, it would just fester. And now I'll begin to think, oh, Prophetess is taking side. I can't believe this is what she said. It's not her understanding where I'm coming. This is when our trouble comes. And you begin to now think prophetess is like against you. Prophetess don't like me. But when you go back to God and you say, Lord, show me myself. Let me see myself. When they're rebuking you, your ears are open to catch what it is that you're saying. And you go back to God and you say, Lord, this is what you have said. Help me. I don't want to be like this anymore. And when you walk like that, you can take rebuke from every and anybody. Yeah. When they tell you, hey, you know, sometimes they say, the way you talk, I don't like it. It's like you say, what do you mean? I don't talk like that. You instead say, oh, I didn't realize. And when you go in your time of prayer, you ask, Lord, change the way I talk. Yeah. When they tell you that, hey, you're always angry and upset. Is everything okay? You don't, you don't go back to exchange where you say, oh, I'm sorry, I will try to work on it. You go back in your prayer closet and you say, Lord, help me. And so when now you begin to change, you're like, huh, that's a good you'll be changing, though. This is not how you were when I met you. Mm. Wow. And that alone is an evangelism. Yeah. 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 You don't have to tell them Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Yeah. You already know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Mm. Even Buddhists know Jesus yeah, Christ is Lord and Savior. Yeah. <laughs> But what about your lifestyle? Yeah. When Job's life was changed, his friends saw and they came to understand that God was not punishing him because he did evil. God was just taking him through a process. And after that process, God lifted him high. And so what do you think his friends were going to do? They were also going to begin to ask Job, hey, how did you stay in your faith? Yeah. How did you do it? I want to do it too. Amen. Amen. And so, I pray today that God will begin to reveal to us the characters that we have. This year should not go by and you don't know the kind of bad character that you have. Everyone has something in them that God is trying to take out. This year should not pass by and you have not worked on one thing. I've given you four, that was me. Now you begin to make your own list and see what you have. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. And so I have just one prayer point for us this morning. We are going to say, Lord, speak to me. My ears are open. My heart is open. Speak to me. Whisper to me the characters that I have that I need to change. Show me myself. Show me where I have been going wrong all this while. Show me that what has been causing me to fall. Show me my stumbling block. Open my eyes so I can see. Is it anger? Is it hatred? Is it jealousy? Is it envy? Is it bitterness? Is it controlling? Is it holding grudges, not wanting to let go? You ask God, Lord, whisper to me what it is I have to change. Or are you just like me? You don't know how to hold your tongue. You have a loose tongue. You ask God, Lord, help me. You don't like to take rebuke. You ask God, Lord, help me understand rebuke. Open up my heart to hear. Show us our true self, oh God, that has been holding us back, oh God. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see my true nature that has been holding me back, oh God. I'm 
Hallelujah. 